Welcome on back in, everyone, to Total War Warhammer 3 in part 10 of our legendary Mother of Stalkia Mortal Empires campaign. In today's episode, we are here to throw down against the hordes of the Von Karsteins. They have sent an absolute ton of units to try to stop us from just kind of picking off their lands one at a time here and stealing what riches we can. We've got up front here our Hag Witch and Kevin to kind of be as much of a distraction as possible, dropping down all of the spells, just dealing as much damage to these skeleton warriors as we can while also focus firing down the Crypt Horrors with the Akshina agents. I mean, we're taking a few shots into the Skelly Warriors like we didn't want, but their main target is going to be the Crypt Horrors. We've also been shot with Paul's Arrow, which will slow down all that nasty regeneration they gain in an effort to try to take out as many as we can. Still got all of their models, except for two of them. So as long as you don't drop that model, they can heal up all of their health provided they haven't hit their healing cap, of course. I'm going to get some point blank shots in on one of the hoarders that managed to catch her. Luckily, no actual damage dealt. I'm trying to use the actual charge bonus extra speed to enable her to zoom along a little bit faster there. Continuing to harass the enemy with all of the Flock of Doom spells, we have Fragmenti down on a Mine Rat and all of the other lords that shall be arriving just to weaken their overall regeneration. He's got both Invocation of the Heck, and I believe since he's a Vampire Lord, he should also be healing. This one doesn't have regeneration just yet. So Fragmenti is just forcing him to use all of his spells on himself. And all the rest of our forces, we've got them up on the hills, with the armor piercing Spiders up on one flank, all of the others on the other with a Spirited Away group up front, just to drop some bears in because of the sheer number of uh, undead coming across the field. With the Tours of Battle Brothers waiting up front. Drop down. Holy Lightning. As things currently stand, though, the harassment is going fantastic. And Kevin is able to replenish those Akshina's ammunition over time so they can continue to rain death upon our foes. Since they're so quick, they can easily kind of sit here and keep skirmishing, harassing the whole way back. Very similar to just shades, but this level. Rattling of the bones. Quite a timid response from our foes here, not wanting to really get much towards our lines before the rest of their army actually arrives. It's a strategy. Going for the no look shots. I just for the cool guy points. You can already see the skeleton warriors are down to tatters. Empire Lord trying to chase our hag witch around. He just doesn't have the legs for it. He's able to just kind of skate circles around and destroy his units the whole time. They have been keeping their crypt horrors back, though. They definitely know that this is their most important unit to stay alive. Black Knights are in now as well as the massive swath of just zombies and uh, skeletal warriors. Legions of the Von Karstein are on the march. Let's see if this is their uh, final resting place. Quite a few Grave Guard in the lines as well. And they've got a Necromancer taking up the very rear with his own Honor Guard of Knights as well. Love the VFX, the blue hooves and eyes on the uh, the Black Knights are amazing. But do shiny lights make for a good unit? We will find out. Arrows continuing to raid towards those Crypt Horrors as another one falls. That bonus versus large shot is insanely great. We've got the Ice Witch and the other heroes kind of down to screen the enemies. Now trying to lure in these Black Knights, that way we can get them laced up with as many bolts and arrows as we can. They haven't had their daily iron intake. Zombie's got a devastating salvo from the Arcina. Our Arcina actually haven't used their nets even once yet, so the plan is, as soon as those Black Knights arrive, get a little bit too close, stop them from moving, and then all arrows shall turn their direction. Get rid of our UI a little bit more here. Lovely. Forge, try to make its way on in. Arrows flying, and we'll send in the demon stags once more. 
smash right through. You want to keep them moving to the best as you can. They don't have the most mass. You do have to micro your hag, which is quite a bit, but it's very worth it. Things like the Patriarch are much more sturdy. And even if they lose their health, they're getting their uh, passive abilities too. Frostworm's talking some smack. Get ready to get frosty. is an excellent wall. We'll have it sit here, hold the line, lock in all these big targets. They're not going anywhere. Actually get a fair bit of damage in as well. Frostworm the wall. Over on the other end, the both brothers of Tor and their spider allies are ripping it through one unit of Skelly Spearman at a time. Those models are dropping it so quickly. Well, back on the front. Frostworm is styling on everyone. Not doing a lot of damage, but looking great while doing it. So many of the enemy forces are already fizzling on away to nothing before we've even hit the lines. We're gonna get rid of the ones that are front here, that way we can focus our archers elsewhere. Black Knights are being foolish and making the charge directly into our Crystal Light Warriors. I'm going to mute my microphone just for a moment so I've got uh, some uh, aerial maneuvers going on overhead. Enjoy the battle. I'm back. Love the Oath Brothers of Tor and their lightning. Our guys trying to land on our Hagwitch. We definitely want to get her away from them, even though we have a drop. I believe I've got first or two on them. I do not. I mean, they are going to be the pretty dangerous last canyon that we know they're going to be. Smash right into our Flight Warriors. It's like quite a few just by walking into them. They will drop just as quickly as our own lads, though. Ice Wish making her presence felt. We've got our purple spiders back in the background there, fighting a group of spearmen that were getting froggy, trying to flank on around. Your Both of your types of spiders are just going to count as normal infantry, so none of the bonus versus large will be applying towards the spearmen's damage, so... Great trade for us. Battle going very well for Kiss Level Common. Even though the Oath Brothers are being completely surrounded, they are ripping and tearing through Spearmen. Just don't really have the damage output to actually do much to them. If it's completely split up, and it doesn't matter. You don't want this to happen for long, though, so you want to get your units moving towards one another. That way, they're not taking all of the. Uh, extra flank damage, both to their leadership and to their overall health. She have been charged down by some grave guard, but they are fairly decent to fight. I'll have them some backup quite soon either way. The wolf parts I have applied the passive that will give them an explosive demise, as well as 15% more range. If they fall, they will explode with a devastating effect for their foes. Only 1,800 skeletons remain. Crossform and his heroes. Absolutely obliterating. Try to bring the Patriarch on over towards the Oath Brothers of Thor, who were a little bit on their own. Give them a little bit of heals on the way through, and now we've got to deal with the Black Coach and the Morngulls, who have now emerged from their hiding place. Which is madness, I did put down on both of the Black Coaches, so they at once fly into melee, are going in nowhere. 
see how well the Oath Brothers handle these poor black coaches. Good madness is best on your enemy mages or any kind of chariots that are normally going to be wanting to charge in and out of combat. We'll just stop them from doing so. Your way is here. Just in time. Outnumbered 5 to 1, and we outright annihilated them. They should have brought more men. Oh, Mindrad. Oh, and Andreas von Snickler. We took out the von Snickler twins. And we shall go ahead and. Slyak provides is very tempting here. Especially since we're gaining almost nothing from pardoning those captives. Forgiveness is not going to be the way this time. We'll go ahead and. Pray to Slyak. Victory makes us strong. Even after we lost so few, we can take the fight directly to Needling now. The Manus of Urson. These ancient fighting claws, oh that sounds awesome, are believed to be the pattern upon which the Akshina modeled their weapons. We don't have any claw-based weapon units in the game currently. Uh, I'm betting when we get kind of more of an Ursonite based uh, DLC, that's where we're going to see those Manus being used in more of a unit. We've also got a uh, new student and a Vampire Slayer. Marvelous. Drugena. I'd also like to go ahead and have myself a Needling. There are a few of the more elites remaining, but I think we just go ahead and give this one to the auto resolve. We'll lose a lot more than we did previously, but that'll be alright. Fight for Kislev! Fight for Kislev. We did have to sacrifice one of our spider hatchlings in the battle, but they will be honored on the wall of uh, critters. We'll call it the wall of critters. And we can go ahead and sack Needling for a bit of gold. And some spirit essence. I think that's not a bad idea. Let's go ahead and do some do some damage. They must cower before Ursul. Yoink as much out of the vampire's treasury as we can before we uh, take their lands from them. Seasoned campaigner. Evan, being so far away from the bleak coast, is now an excellent, excellent campaigner. More movement range and perfect vigor is all I really care about. Also got a ritual enforcer. Less corruption would be great for nullifying all of this hot topic stuff people are putting up. <laughs> I agree. So as far as the bewitching, not the bewitching lore, I'm looking for Slaughter on the Steps. We're just waiting on the uh, Frozen Outpost. This is how we get Ulrika. I think I want Ulrika to join up with Kevin, and we'll have the Golden Knight. I don't know. I'd love to have the Golden Knight with a Boyar or even Katarin herself once we get her confederated. We shall see. Up into uh, almost Peace real yes. fast. Or is, is actually deteriorating because we're a strategic threat. Claiming yes. too much land in the Empire, I guess. What? Northern wants a defensive alliance. How much land do you guys have left? Almost nothing. And they're down to one and they're completely surrounded by enemies. Hopefully, we are being we a good enough lunch. distraction that the. Vampires start turning to deal with us, but I don't. We'll see, won't we? Currently, they've had, they've only dealt or sent some very paltry forces to try to deal with us. We'll come on in now and grab a needling. Now, defend the motherland. Going. A worthy addition to my holdings. Indeed. We'll go ahead and demolish this building, and repair the main settlement. Send you one over to yoink some technology from Fort Obersteyer. Beware the hag. Beware the hag. Maybe. They were innately resistant. You, just, you say they're innately resistant? You said beware. For survival. They prepared for your arrival. We'll go ahead and give Lucia here. You're of hags and you are cunning, so poison attacks, which are great. Uh, let's. Just go for steel technology first. I'd like to actually yoink some away. Speed our knowledge along. Rosina, ready. Have it. It's time for you to gain it. Also, oh, Tall's Fury is the upgraded version of Tall's Judgment, which just gives you an additional use and a little bit of a drop in cooldown. God of Nature is fiercely protective of his domain. Only the foolish provoke his wrath. That's true. Luckily, we have enough points for both. It was the lands, its rivers, its streams, the best spots to defend, and the best places to strike. As was definitely uh, shown off in that last battle. The noble choice. Leg sweep of the vampires. We'll snag the upgrades to the Flock of Doom. 
that final point there, making it have a 50% drop to its cooldown and make it cost a little bit less in Winds of Magic. Defender of Caseless. Also going to go ahead and grab the upgrade to Solyox Lullaby, which allows us to use it 25% faster. And then we can go ahead and give him Icon of Strength. He already got a really good amount of leadership, so let's go ahead and increase his melee defense just a bit. Patriarch's kind of a weird character where you do want him to be low on health because of his Courage of Sacrifice ability. But you do want him to have an amazing amount of melee defense, that way when he does drop that low, he doesn't end up uh, just getting rope chopped. Commander of the soldier. Because Ahala can call in a capture cat. We are absolutely going to. I don't know if they still have the ability to capture points, but initially they they were they were able to, and that's why they're nicknamed the capture cats. They just kind of ran around and yoinked all of the different points in the settlement battles. We'll also upgrade scouting and boost income for now. Just get these passives up and fully powered. Then we can start working down her magic line. Upgrading guardian call just I think makes the snow leopard a little bit stronger to melee attack and defense and then the final form has greatly increased melee attack and defense let's try to keep track of what each of the stats are will we succeed uh doubtful how do you items to give you the menace of urson or the claws of doom that's corruption and melee defense for the item combination she would then rampage. Now we don't we don't need that at all. Sounds like a really bad idea. Wouldn't mind giving that to one of our Guardian patriarchs. The, the rampage would then uh, not allow us to use his battle prayer. So we probably want the manas to go on a boyar. Since they're the ones that have the least amount of activated abilities. Kind of a strange item there. Is it warrants you giving that to a unit who is not going to be actually using their skills, or one who doesn't have as many skills? Give you an Akshina, a Kossar, and a student for that research rate. We can yoink around to our different Drusina's heroes here and make sure we've got as much goodies as we can. Servant for you. Akshina informant for you. We've got some banners to pass out to the lords, which is lovely. The veteran warrior for more unit recruitment rank. Which Urkulisk already has. Bailiff is only giving us one additional control. Let's go ahead and actually knock that one on off to give him one of these banners. Wouldn't mind trying out the steel standard, but I want to give this to Astonkia. We'll give you a standard of the empty step. And then for Mama Stanky, let's go ahead and get rid of this bailiff grab the steel standard i'm gonna also go ahead and get rid of the veteran warrior here as well as the knight's ward anything that gives you more movement is what we really want in fact i will steal it away from one of our other lords or heroes quite quickly because like also we'll give this over to mother of stonky for more movement is building up keep or building uh, income. Yes, we'll give her some more ancillaries as we go here. All right, all right. Let's combine up the scroll of shielding and the power stone. And horseman speculum. Small magical mirror has the ability to destroy the enemy if only they look upon its cracked surface. We're gonna be running around the battlefield trying to show everyone this mirror. It's like a Helm of Discord, but a little bit stronger. And it goes in the Enchanted Item slot. That's pretty great. In fact, let's go ahead and give this over to Kazahela, who already has the Helm of Discord. We'll trade it out for the Potion of Healing. But now she's going to be able to super debuff people. We'll give the Potion of Healing over to Shagan. Just kidding. Plus the Helm of the Oblos is excellent. You will do some healing then. All right, now we'll quit equipping items. Let's see what other actions need to be addressed. Great to see who exactly how things are playing out up here in the wastes. Obviously, all the Norskins are going to be exactly fine unless Cathay actually comes up and starts 
chopping throats, which we haven't yet. I bet it's only a matter of time. For an ancient city here up to... I guess a normal city. We need to wait quite a few turns. We could just go ahead and go for the upgrade to the Petrified Forest up to tier 3. Iron Spike, I do want the Palisade right away. Go for Petrified. We can grab the Pottery Maker for fairly cheap. They wouldn't mind an additional eerie, eerie woods. It doesn't actually allow you to gain any more uh, garrison defenders, so I'm not going to go for that yet. That's how dangerous Betchafin is currently. I mean, it's really not. Vampires could circle back over and come after us. We should instead, though, I think. Just add in some normal infrastructure. Grab the roadhouse here for some growth. That'll do. Islev will claim you. One has used up all of their movement here. We can come on into the brass keep and do some stealing. We can try to. Ooh, she failed to. Man, our hag witches are not doing very well in that regard there at all. All right. All that. You got one. Are you getting this skill even though you failed? How lucky for you. I'll give you a point into Witch Brew. Swing on down to Stanky. That'll be our turn. It is Festag. We should consider a treaty between us. Non aggression pact. He's currently working with the Jade Court, so we will. Are you willing to give us any more gold than you're currently offering? 615, perhaps. We is. Mama Haggle. 625, we might be able to get a little bit more. Maybe 630. Alright, too much. What about 628? That'll do then. We have an agreement. Auckland is in open rebellion now. Oh, and it's Auckland itself. All right, Hans. Unachievable. Unachievable. We've got a trickster cult here in Needling. He must act immediately. Let's see how built up it is. Howling in the woods like a roiling wave of terror, the call of the forest is a sign to lock your doors twice, salt your windowsills, and to close your ears to the voices. Our things in the woods attacked are going to cause discouraged effect, which is going to lower leadership, except for the, uh, the Mordheim Bills. They've got the ability that stops healing. Then they'll gain a little bit more I guess resistance. Anna has finished her training. Leader what is this Kisla trickster cult looking like here? Oh, it's ma almost maxed here. Wind Breaker's Lair. Oh yeah, now we can't have this. Enjoy the trash heap. The trickster cult you discovered has been successfully destroyed. You were fortunate to detect the changeling schemes before they cause any lasting damage. You should remain vigilant lest the cultists infiltrate us again. That means that we have to deal with a trickster nearby. So an ambush is a possibility. Alright, very fair. Chosen Drusina. I'd wither first. Alright, Odila, you have enough uh, black coaches. One, two, three, four, five at least. A bunch of Morn goals as well. Drusina ready. I'm pretty sure we could handle that no problem. We should have recruited in one more Defend unit for Kevin here while we were sitting. I also kind of wanted to give him an additional ROR unit. Earn them. Here from the Ice Court proper, we can just grab some things in the woods. Which is actually probably a pretty good idea. Love that this is the uh, Zargard look. I need one of these blades for my own collection. I will come back to you. Make that decision in just a moment. Mother of Stonk, yeah, we have Felman coming down to do some damage. Step too far. Step too Oh, I'm sure. Are you in my territory, though? How lucky you are that my jinxed land is not... Sorry, it's still on cooldown, that is. Maybe we can hide behind Middenheim and just reinforce the city. If I do not wish to be seen, I shot. I shot. Then we used quite a few of our blessings in that previous battle here, so let's go ahead and grab... Really liked Rat's Grit. It allowed our Frostworm to tank a ton of damage. Grab another one of these. Got 
horns, the bones, and the uh, warp stone fragment. We'll build it on up. And then as many agony successions as we can possibly make. Another whiff of madness is also excellent because we have to put these on the black coaches. That way they are unable to disengage like they want to. Since they're chariots, they want to kind of smash in and keep moving around. We will not allow them to. Alright, I'm thinking any kind of building we do in Weissblood is going to swiftly be burned to the ground by these guys. So let's go ahead and leave this as is. Here in Midnheim. Well, I would love to go for the Stanitsa. If they attack us, it just kind of holds it up for an additional turn, which is just not a very good use of our resources. Go back over to Sildur Tor. Let's upgrade the Farm Estate. And even the Vintner. Lastly here, we'll put in the walls, just to make sure we don't lose our uh, our wine-producing region. That's English. We're at 99 treasury. Kevin's not going to gain any additional troops, unless we come down here and uh, smash the fort. Let's see if there's anyone Stag. moving in behind them as reinforcements. Uh, probably from the, your, their actual capital. Reckonhoff should be right over here. Yep, indeed. Guardian right, let's move on the fort. Insolence. There's no one else nearby here. While well, this army looks a little bit scary, all these black coaches are not fantastic if we get them bogged down in the right units. It will blend right no through my poor spider hatchlings, us. though. I think it's a risk I'm willing to take. Onward to Conquest. Whilst we are here for as much violence as possible. Battle, we are going to want to fight ourselves. I'll be using no curses or blessings. We want to save as many as we can. Besides the victory it says we're going to have, but since we have all of these very, very lightly armored spider hatchlings, they will get blended up no matter what. Uh, so let's take it to them. But know that Mother Kislev strengthens her faithful defenders. Indeed. It's time to pad our stats. Kevin's army has already been proven well capable of dealing with the Vampiric Scourge, but let's make sure we don't have any issues with any armies hiding in the wings. And Auto Resolve tends to like to just charge your men in and get them slain in the dozens for no reason. Let's start things off with a nice volley out of our Archina. Got nothing really that I'm scared of closing the gap, and if anything, anything tries, we've got a big angry frost worm. Tell them hello. Smash right into the front line, disrupting that entire unit. Takshina and Kossar is working together to go after those. A dire bats, we're not really concerned about them. No matter where they land, they're not going to be doing much, and they choose to surround our Hagwitch. We'll have no trouble dealing with the bats. is how the current battle line's looking out. We've got the Spider Swarm, the Oath Brothers working together once more. Little Spiders get that damage over time effect, and the Oath Brothers rip through any armor foes might have. This is going to be quite a fast battle, though. Nice magic ripping through the Grave Guard there. We're already facing down the armor-piercing and poisonous effect giant spiders bring to bear. Not a fun time for anyone. Got a couple of the other spiders charging in the middle to defend it cause a Hala. The truth is he doesn't need it, as her foes have been dropped down. We missed the drop down to below zero on both their stats with the combination of the two effects there. And like that, the real things in the woods rip through the final vestiges of what I guess would be considered a defense. Alright, a loss count of 15 is exactly what I was more looking for there. Crossworm still took a little bit of damage, but it is a very, very good tank. I, like, I'm, like you guys, I'm not exactly sure what the point of these are still. 
they're quite good if their proper animations play, but there's sometimes where they get locked in using the uh, same one where they kind of just blast forward with the ice over and over and over again. It doesn't seem to hit hardly any units at all. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sack the fort gain. and pull back into friendly territory to replenish. In fact, Drujina. are we able to know we can't quite ambush? We'll just go march dance back Here in a new landing command. then. Move out! Sorry, Odilio. A little bit too slow you are. Guardian of the land. With now those ill-gotten gains, let's now increase the spider murder capabilities. So four extra melee attack for the snow leopard, war bear riders, elemental bear, spiders, fell bats, feral bears, things in the woods, frost worms, and elemental incarnate of beast units. That's quite the list. Rosina ready. For Irina, we'll grab the evasion passive. So as long as she is counted as losing a fight, get a little bit more speed and melee defense. Which on a chariot you are counting as losing the fights quite often. Chagan and increased compassion ability. Noble of the Oblast. Here in Needling, let's just go ahead and acquire another farmstead for the time being. Champion of Kislev. Grab the Arkhamaz upgrade here in Bechvin. Mordheim. Mordheim is what I was thinking about giving over to Islev proper. So let's go ahead and do that here in just a moment. I'm not going to do any upgrades to Mordheim proper, especially if we're going to be Defender giving that over Islev. to Katarin. As far as our next technology goes, I think we're going to grab the 50 Spirit Essence Poacher's Bane here. In battles, enemy units and forests are revealed regardless of distance. And then we'll gain an extra 100 armor piercing damage for all of our elemental incarnate beasts. We are more doing this, though, for that first effect, that no one can hide from us. The land, the tales, the cities. Exactly. Knocking things over on my desk. This mug. Right back to things. Look at her. None shall question me. Ring rank 11. The amount of items we keep giving her, these settlements we're giving her, is definitely boosting up her power. Slowing our overall ability to uh, confederate. You're closest with her than anyone else, though, as trusted friends. No confederation, but I will give you... Mordheim. You shall give me all the gold. Works for me. Even more than she has the capabilities of actually providing. You honor the crown. 289 a total attitude value. We are best buddies with Katarin. Mistress of Ice! Alright, that'll do. Now with that gold, we can come on back down to Kevin and give him another RR unit. I'm thinking the Boydenov's Brawlers, I would like to try them in tandem with Wolfhart so we can stop one unit and then I'll lay into them with that armor piercing missile strength. I think that should be quite fantastic. I need only the best. Needs only the best. We will start trading out our normal spider hatch things for all of the armor piercing purple variant quite soon. Mother Ostantia. No upgrades at mid nine. Let's go ahead and see if we can back at Titan Peaks. Beautiful. So Grey Rock Point, we can go ahead and slot in. Your three trade quorum would give us 221 gold. Or we could just boost up our, our uh, income and growth a little bit more with the farm estate. I think we're going to go for with the uh, farmstead. Control being as low as it is, though, we could switch that out for uh, the pro house to get control in order as well. And then we could upgrade the town here. That way we could get the growth upgrade on the harbor as well. How dangerous is Sildur Ator at the moment? Ah, uh, well, with that continued de deterioration, very dangerous. Drugina. Wedge between two people that don't like us very much, but Kotep is trending towards positive. So let's have you quickly move to Arnheim. Come, sing, dance, and drink. We'll claim this shipwreck and then move back down south. Respect my position. You stay in Morstance, my friend. 
or not, because we can give it an additional unit of, say, horse archers or something for some uh, lovely skirmish damage. They don't have the most. Their bows do exactly the same as normal Kossars, and there are only, what, 60 of them? Alright. That's not selling me on that unit. Maybe just some good old armored Kossars for their pistols. Yeah, let's do it. We'll grab one unit of armored Kossars for those pistols. They can be kind of the middle of these two. Alright, Casimira hasn't been moved. That changed right away. Let's see if you can steal some deck this time. Did you win? You did. Ulias for all. I'm going to give you another point into steel technology then. Oh, just kidding. We're, we're working on your spellbook first. Your god of slavins. We're not here to barter with any slavins. Let's skip on through. I'm going to double check to make sure we haven't In my own lifetime. forgotten to make our incantations. Of course, it has been a we should get. We already. I think we already have the bewitching lure quest battle. Perfect. We need to get that underway quite soon. I think Astonkia's army currently should have no trouble dealing with it. Let's leave her here for the single turn just to try to ambush Felman's army here at full strength, and then afterwards we'll we'll go for that quest battle here next turn. Alright, so the Von Karstrines are coming up from the south to go after Weissmund. It wasn't exactly the vampires I thought that attacked. Uh, but as long as they claim the settlement, now they're locked in one place. Go for it. The motherland never falters. Uh, in, in my head, Ken, these people all got evacuated. We knew they were coming. This was filled with just a bunch of straw people that didn't actually exist. Water on the steps has been successful. Uh, so now, roused by your military successes, the Golden Knight, oh, this is the Golden Knight first, uh, comes to defend your realm. Before she can join battle, however, the esteemed warrior requires an outpost to serve as a rendezvous. Oh, we've, we reading through what we already have. Ariska Lesa, the Golden Knight of Kislev. Golden Knight arrives, consecrated by the Cult of Ursin and decreed by the Ice Court. Beacon of Strength and an icon, an icon of Kislev. As the most feared combatant in the Motherland's ranks, her influence on the battle lines will be immense, while her late father's association with Boris Ursus affords her considerable bureaucratic gravitas, which could be of use to you. Which role will you give her first? Wrath or Icon of Kislev? Recruitment costs for Ice Guard units and then immune to psychology for Zargard. Icon. Give us even more recruitment capacity and relations with Kislev. An icon of Kislev, the Golden Knight unites Kislevites and symbolizes strength in all under the Motherland's protection. That's what we're going to go for then, to help speed us along in our confederation efforts with uh, Katarin and anyone else. And the Golden Knight arrives! Got Poacher's Bane as well, so those who take without remorse are irrevocably marked. Each stain a siren call of the spirits who prepare for the reaping. The next step in our Bait the Bloodborne quest for Ulrika. Uh, the reports were not exaggerated. Bodies abound were discovered clawed, savaged, and feasted upon by some unholy creature. A peasant is encountered who speaks of a near deadly encounter with a naked, feral vampire, or the intervention of other aristocrat known as Countess Gabriella prevented him from becoming the creature's victim. Curiously, the Countess had addressed the naked vampire as Ulrika. This is Ulrika Straghov, missing daughter of the deceased Ivan Straghov, who had warned Zarina Katarin of the impending chaos invasion, and further investigation is required. Peasant believes the Countess and Ulrika have retreated to the Nachthofen Castle. Entering the Citadel will require you to masquerade as nobility. Masquerade. Uh, best achieved with the help of a gold-laden treasure vault. Uh, such expenses invested in our infiltration will surely your uh, results. But once we get that 1500 treasury in the bank here, which it's going to seem to take a little bit, we will then acquire Ulrika. And then we'll have ourselves a new event to deal with her. 
So welcome Golden Knight, who's going to show up next to Mother Astakia. I went absolutely over the top with her, didn't she? She looks fantastic, although these are quite clumpy looking boots. Absolutely love this armor. We've got kind of a blade of ice, I guess, almost a scimitar, and then the shield is a stag, but encrusted with ice and gold. I love it. So as far as her skills, we've got the Golden Aegeus. All of the many men armed and armored to the teeth and beyond. Golden Knight is a beacon of courage on the battlefield, an example to all Kislevites and the bane of their foes. Successor, I'll more read these once we actually start unlocking them, but we'll kind of just mouse through. Golden Wall, Health and Armor. Cooldown reduction to Urson's Claw, which freezes enemies so they can't move. Good grief. Common ground, common enemies. But we're going to start seeing Frozen more often with some enemies here, or at least our own Islavite troops here going forward. Islav Unite. Awesome. She also has her own kind of agent line as well. The Shield of the Motherland boosting up the armor for the entire army. Enchanted armor, giving the accompanying lord a bit more ward save. Consecrated, yeah, she definitely needs to go with Katarin. Especially since she's dropping the cooldown to all spells for the accompanying lord. Vigorous drill. 66% Vigor Loss Reduction for the accompanying Lord. And Zarina's Guardian. Immune to Flanking. 20% Resistance for all Lords or Heroes in range. That's insane. Islev, good old Deadly Blade. So she's got Soothsaying then. Interesting. That being, I guess, a demonstration of her uh, association with the Cult of Urson. Present more experience for the Lord, as well as 10% more replenishment rate. Heroic Resilience, which all of the boyars and things have. She's fantastic. Oh, and she has even more unique skills? Good grief. March of the Zarina. Speed for all the Zargard and Ice Guard. Melee attack and weapon strength for uh, Zargard and Ice Guard. Just Ice Guard. Either way, allows them to actually throw down in, in, a, in a melee fight. Learn from the best. Or experience for Zargard and Ice Guard. 20 more armor and melee and 6 more melee defense for Zargard. And then missile and spell resistance for the whole army. That's pretty insane. That's not on even uh, mentioning us all of her weapons and things. So she's got magical attacks, 10 extra bonus versus inventory, and that Urson's Claw ability that'll be freezing foes, as well as giving her a 50% bump to both base and armor piercing we uh, weapon damage. Golden Wafers. Ah. She's bringing cookies to the battle. From the Golden Knights were split in armor hang trinkets bestowed by the High Patriarch, granting legitimacy in both the eyes of the church and the state. Ward save and spell resistance, and then her totem, uh, totem of Ursus. Intrinsically unnatural, yet supernaturally powerful, this artifact exudes an aura that enfeebles the spirit of those who defy its invigorated bearer. Yeah. She just silences everyone nearby. Nareska the Mage Hunter. Incredible. So wait, she was missing just one item. Knight. She has no armor. That's, that doesn't seem real at all. And then she has, I guess, her own unique trait. The Zarina's Guardian, consecrated by the Cult of Ursin to be the Zarina's Noble Guardian, the Golden Knight walks the near-invisible line between church and state. Even more diplomatic relations with Gislev, more recruit rank for the Zargard for this army, and some spell resistance for the entire army. Why does she not have armor? I feel like, this would be some unique armor. We may also have seen a little bit of a bug here. May not be, though. For now, we'll not worry about it. We'll give her some armor when some good Lincoln comes along. In the meantime, we'll earn her self spancillaries as well. Mother Stonkia. 
Yes, I like. Oh, Golden Knight, I would like you not be fighting here. I like my army currently as is with Mother Estonkia. Uh, well, we might just get rid of one of these Kiss the Light Warriors for now, since they are quick and easy to get back in the army. There is nothing beyond duty. Nothing at all. You know, I love all of my giant spiders, and both Gretel and Talika are a uh, fair amount to our for fights here. Soldier is useful. See you lads later. No, you're not. You'll be back. Yes. Dramatic they are deemed though. Train hard, fight hard. Train hard, fight hard. Dead eyes, sting, snipe, and stalk. I think we'll go for a couple more agony sessions though, because we're about to jump in. Throw it out with a whole bunch of horde-based units. Give ourselves something to blend them up. We'll also go ahead and grab an additional rat's grit. Such a good, such a good blessing. I guess one more whiff of madness, because that's all we else we've got. Excellent. Now onward to deal with these rogue witches. One additional secondary trinket slot. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start actually working on proper technology now. 20% more income from port sounds great. Welcome, Aaron Grad Code. We will bring new troubles into the world. Indeed, our income and treasury right now are really not great. Let's go bully Fjorda. What's your name? Ghidora? Bullied all the same. We teleport on over, walking into an ambush so we don't get to give her any kinds of debuffs at all. Would have done me well to remember that, wouldn't it? Let's go ahead and give Nareska the steel standard. 39 speed. I'm gonna give her also... Man, Rat's Grit doesn't go on you. You've got no missile units, or mi no missile attack. Well, Bear's Bulwark then? Ember Dread would work out pretty well too. We'll go Rat's Grit on Frostworm, and then we'll do Unburdened Step on Stonkia. All of the other witches, and that's about it. Make sure we don't have any issues here. Your stags look, uh, suspiciously unspirit-like there, Yodora. Yet an old woman stands here, fearless before the foe. As Mother Spunky continues to speechify, friends. the ambush Do is you upon fear us. the enemy more? Or me? Would like a little bit of a change to ambush battles where you're actually able to kind of set up how your units would be arrayed on the field, but that's just fine. We start off with trying to micro what we have here. Most important units being Zakshina, hold the bot behind our lines. Let us Stonkia smash on in and the big beasties kind of hold the line for moment. Stonkia's first Varangir effect is going to be really limiting the enemy's damage. And then the, uh, the ice bears combined with the things in the woods and the Mordheim bear wolves should rip right through the poor war bear riders here who are thinking themselves superior for a brief moment. Frostworm, it's causing some issues in the poor Chaos Dwarvian work laborers, but both of the groups of ice guard have some pretty clear shots into our fortunate spiders for the meantime. World Wood Elves having a terrible day. Pretty awesome blend of blue and red there. Those defending forces not doing well. Enemy Hag Witch learning that she is not in fact built different as the stock it closes the gap. Theodora has four of each attack and defense with no armor. Death is but a moment away. First army aggressively dealt with. Poor misled because of like Kossar is getting ripped apart. And now it's the Ice Guard's turn. They are now surrounded by both armor piercing and poisonous spiders and feral bears. 
health bar is dropping so fast. But Ambush's second and third prong now reveal themselves. We have what is your name, unfortunate soul? Vaska on goal, charging on across the field with her Minotaurs. Arachnorox Spider with would love to actually get some Arachnorox here access for normal Astakia, but that is not the way at the moment. He's also got a couple of Cheeto covered gores and a big red corny Cygore. Who again looks quite awesome with the Kislev colors. She's bringing a pretty nasty army. What about her sister, Bella Ungle? This is looking a little bit more sneaky with all of the different vermin. Lovely. First time I've had to do a jump cut inside of a battle, but we had a biplane just zoom right overhead. Got all of the vermin coming in for this Ungol. Death Runners, Skaven Slaves. I think she doesn't have any Death Runners. See Night Runners. Yeah, they are. A bunch of deadly units coming in over here. Small and the large. Ratty David and Big Icy Goliath. We're gonna now split our units up to try to deal with the oncoming onslaught. But with the surviving ice guard, we do need to kind of turn around and deal with them first before this group of big beasties shows up. Split our forces. Let Stonkia deal with Bella Ungol first. Foes have been uncovered. Arkshina are going to also split up in teams of two with the Golden Knight. We're going to show off for the first time here. Moving over to deal with this squad. Slow mo shots of the Golden Knight. Absolute unit. Figure if anyone could stand firm against the uh, against the whole Cygore by herself, it's definitely going to be Nariska. Minotaurs are first to make contact with our Hag Witch. Definitely not a fight we want her, so pulling away is going to be very important. Manticore coming up from beneath the ground to help out, though. You're going to send the Manticore directly after the Vasca on gold just to try to get her dragged down as quickly as we can. This is another one of those battles where if you take down the Hags, it ends right away. First of our Titanic clashes. Closing to Dallas some ice, but the Snow Leopard comes in to interrupt our battle. We'll get to see an actual Ice Bear on Ice Bear fight here in just a moment. Looking back over to the unfortunate vermin being ripped apart by male wolves and bears. Run, flee, flee. This first army here with all the uh, rats was annihilated quite quickly. Rat ogres are finally made it on in though. But even then, we've got very low attack, so as soon as they do make contact, he hits them back. Now they're down to four and two, and doing nothing at all. This army is effectively nullified on the side, so we'll switch back over for the Arachnorok got dealt with in very short order fighting against a big ol' Icy Bear. It's not rated for Icy Bears. Looks like we're trying to get some splash attacks on the Archina now. Bold strategy. Right on the other side, we've got Bear facing off against smaller bears. Like normally, the Feral Bears would win just fine, but I want to try to draw everything on in together to be hitting, being hit with all the Frozen Heart of Winter at once. Quite managed to let it happen, though. You have Nariska throwing down with Snow Leopard currently, and she is... And she's huge, isn't she? Taller than a normal Feral Bear, not on its back legs, of course, but... Definitely larger than a normal... Normal Ungol. We've all been waiting for, though, the Bear Bash. There can be only one. Ours, obviously, is the much more beautifully neonified. Has backup. The 
something innately amazing about two big monsters that are animated at well clashing against one another. As the enemy's bear is felled. Frozen Heart of Winter is alpha. Our own Hagwitch took an absolute ton of damage there, but the enemies flee for the hills. Last survivors being the Cheeto, Saigor, and Vaska Ungol. Our Akshina have found it, so its days are already quite numerous, uh, quite numbered. Final clash. Stankyev versus. Honestly, the coolest cape I've seen out of the witches in quite some time. No kicks. Not a fight is going. Vaska Ungol's way at all. Nothing really is happening, though. The slight of a stonk is summoning spirits. Like that, they just throw in the towel. She must have saw the Golden Knight closing the gap, and that was just a far too terrifying. Look at these eyes. Coming in for the kill. And that went swimming. Three witches learn not to mess with Mother Astankia. Not even in an ambush can they stand a chance. That was quite a hectic battle, though. We will go ahead and take all of the extra gold. I cannot kill you. Fickle minds are always susceptible to the whims of an alluring charm from a befouling hag. Witchcraft is but one of many ways to sway them. A bewitching lure to exploit those weak of will. Indeed. Now we just need to find whoever's making the most money and uh, take it from them. We've got a militiaman here. Even a small amount of training can be the difference between life and death in the blood-soaked battlefield of the old world. One, a battlefield against, or a battle against any human army. Interesting. Old Knight has got a uh, new student. Sims Gretel. And we've got a competent protector as well. All sorts of new ancillaries here. Perfect. Easy enough. How close are we to the recreant spirit here? 712 more spirit essence. That's a lot. If we, though, grab our bewitching lure, we should figure out who's making the most gold. I figure it'll be likely we could take it from our own settlement, even. How bizarre. Inspire generosity. Well, who's making the most gold? A thousand a turn. Three thousand over here out of the uh, Slanesh followers. I'm thinking that's going to be where we take the money from. Yes. Thank you, Warriors of Chaos. Wisps to make burgers, mines for mint. So be ringed, hands, drop coins and spent. Exactly. The weak are so easily broken. Like puppets, your enemies follow the bewitching lure, dancing to whatever tune you commanded them. With your new thralls siphoning gold from their own settlements, your riches will soon know no bounds. Indeed. The next turn we'll go for the Jinx land. Got a couple comments saying we need to send an army over to Cathay. We shall here at some point. Uh, but we'll need to make sure whatever we send over there is able to handle the spirits of Sean Lin because they are 100% going to be built up and ready for us. Especially, uh, what are we, 47 turns in the game? Wood Elves are very good at turtling up. So we'll build up a good army, and once we have subjugated kind of the area around here, we'll definitely send someone on over to Gislev. We demand due respect. You demand due respect. Uh, so earn it. Seems like an easy... Easy ask. Are we... We have enough health to deal with Ludwig here. Yeah, easily. What am I, what am I asking? Mother Astonk. Yeah, let's start working down your blue line now. Let's go first. I'm thinking Iron Disciplinarian. Yep, none of the others are that useful. Iron Disciplinarian is. Who calls? A Talika. Let's grab the Mentor trait there for oh, your geez. fellow witches. And then... I guess the final point into the Amber Spear. Spirits? 
I see. Which brew here with Gretel makes the blessed version a little bit cheaper. We'll come over and grab the arcane conduit. If you want something done, send a woman Which brew overcast do. is what I am <gasps> using the most often, because uh, it is going to be healing our friendly units and actually adding them an immunity to contact effects, so they will completely then start shrugging off any kind of poison or any nonsense the undead can try to throw their way. For Nariska, we'll give her the heroic resilience. I'm thinking 10 extra armor for the whole army. These are all just active the whole time. Alright then, more training. Do any of these others give us better diplomatic relations with Kislev? That's what we're going to go for first then. Just try to speed on along our confederation with Katarin. We'll give you a new servant. And nothing really else yet. All right, such is the way. And? And? So Thelman has retreated back to the Lorlorn Forest, which we definitely need to claim for that lovely bit of spirit essence we'll be uh, siphoning from the area. Spirits bring death! We'll just move on down here, though, and dropkick Ludwig. Come on, auto-resolve. Be kind. Ooh, a close victory. I'll take it. Brave guard, ahoy. Do not disappoint us, Dunkia. Only Drops. 151 fall. We'll give you a biting blade. Hunk of treasury. Uh, this was once ours. All right, quick cut. We had maintenance come by for a quick question, and so now we are back. I'm actually going to go ahead and loot and occupy to try to coax out a, uh, a rebellion army for us to beat down on. With loot and here. I'm not going to repair anything in this area. It's a new student, really. You may have the... There's a, a kind of a recurrent bug that pops up every now and again where you will just gain an ancillary after every single battle, no matter what. Breaking up on the same turn as researching a technology. Weissman receives a plague. And oh, I do realize the Weissman is so it has the timber, so I'm going to change my plans a little bit here. And we will end up having to repair things, which is a little bit sad. I was just going to give that over to the Empire right away. The fact that it has the uh, timber there means we want to claim it. Go final point into Disciplinarian. Start working on, I guess, a curse we're on here. Finish off the spellbook. Gretel will do the same thing here with Cursed Cauldron. Make it as cheap as possible. Grab the common ground, common enemies. So, Golden Knight impresses potential allies just as much as she inspires its rank and file troops, making them much more willing to join with Kislev for their mutual advantage and gain. Indeed. Golden Wall. Even more bonus visa for infantry. Let's come back down then. And grab the Shield of the Motherland for our entire army to gain in more armor. Which is just ridiculous, especially for all of the different beasties we have here. Combine up these smaller trinkets. Same thing with all of these obsidian amulets. Kind of my least favorite in terms of magical items. They're good if you're fighting lots of death casters, but in less than, not all that great. Gina of Ice. Enables frostbite attacks and 15% more speed. Frost Shard Glaive. So it's a weapon that has just a single activated ability. Negative 40 drop to melee defense is crippling, so makes sense. Let's give you anyone else here, Nariska. Less corruption. That doesn't look great. Learn some more in time. Why are we so I think now we'll come up then. We need to build up our treasury to grab Ulrika, don't we? Okay, so even though I would love to do some more building. May just need to wait. Waiting seems kind of counterintuitive right now. We might be able just to get away with having one or two more battles just to gain up that gold. Delo's just gonna sit back here. Oh, that's why. Here comes Egbert and Marcus. The noble choice. 
Novel choice. I'll have your soul. Okay, these armies are quite a bit more dangerous, especially all together. No. All of them can need to reach Needling. Leader of Kislev's warriors. You might need to strike on out and take down Egbert out here then. That's not a nice looking army though. Did any upgrades with the Needling? Not really. Losing it would still be not great. We can give it over to other Kislev. Chosen Drusina. Or the Golden Order. And fall back a little Noble bit. Of the Oblast. Hide over here and then strike work bad while they're not paying attention. I like that idea quite a bit. Follow me to glory. Sneak on over here. 80% chance out on the open road. Go that makes caution. all of the sense. And then we'll see about giving this settlement over to these guys. I trust our dealings will bear fruit. Oh, you have no idea. I'll give you needling. You'll give me a trade agreement and some gold. Agreed. Everyone wins. Especially me. I return. Oh, I'll give Our you some money. Shared cause is a noble one. Indeed. Old so man Boris and the old other Stonkia. Yeah. So you do remember your czar. Ah, uh, be careful. I don't know if she recognizes you. I don't think Mother Astonkia voted for Boris. At Who calls? The, the Fecundite. Now we're at 1100 treasury. And with just a little bit of finagling it out of our enemies' pocketbooks, I think we should be able to uh, make that money back no problem. Hercules here also has himself the shipwreck to go search. Follow my lead! This might be our, our money we need. We absolutely explore the island as you make the your way across the sea. The ocean enemies. mists suddenly part to reveal an island which, by all accounts, is still uncharted, even by the great map right himself. High spars of rock jut from the sea like spikes in a trap that has ensnared some prey. Indeed, a wrecked ship lies impaled in the small island's coastline. Crew seem to have been moved into the interior, along with any valuables that may have been on board. We shall explore. Looks like they don't like us exploring. And they are going to try to eliminate my bats and a unit of my Kislevite warriors. You know, this time I think that's perfectly fine by me, because I need the money for... I need the money for Ulrika. We'll take this win. And any extra captives we can pardon. Oh, so close. But with the Risen Isle here, we've got materials at sea, which is going to increase our income from all buildings by 10%. So next turn here, we should have exactly what we need. Defender of Kislev. We had to sacrifice Herculisk's troops. Let's march stands back into Arnheim. Me. He might Respect be able to. My position. Ready. If you can't tell, I'm trying to sneak our way into gaining the yes. final stage of that quest Miss this turn here. Onward. You fighting anyone that I'm not? No. Or Revivalists are fighting the Magath Ken faction. We could go ahead and join with them. Any friend of is I'll join your war with Magath Ken, and you will give me money. There it is. So you... Oh, I thought the game had a, had a bit of a heart attack. We're at 1500 treasury, but I think we have to do so before the end of the end of the turn. I tried my best. Mara, you come on down and keep exploring. Stacks forward. Wouldn't mind you stealing some tech from no Dragon's Death here. An old lady. Should make the fans like us a little bit more. Rely on the hack. Beautiful. Well done. Ourselves a, a brand new student. Static. Our technology is uh, blasting through the roof at this point. What are we sitting at now? 195%? Sure. Five more turns for the Iringrad Code. Anyone else need movement this turn? How's Amira? I'll give you another chance. Let's have you try to take Grass Keeps. Technology. You succeeded as well. Still only 195%, which is kind of strange. And then it may just boost up your next turn. 
Musha. Instead of Corva. Not going to have you do any kind of because we, we've already dropped below 1500. So just kind of keep an eye on kind the south here. They have claimed so much land. Hopefully, this gives the dwarfs some time to recover as well. All right, swing back over to Mother Astonkia here. One our turn. Really trying to get us to build stuff, isn't it? And like that, we have completed the final stage in Ulrika's quest, and here I shall leave you all on a bit of a cliffhanger. Hope you all have enjoyed today's Mother of Stonkia episode. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like for like, God, and a sub for the sub phone. I will see you all in the next one.